So we use a lot of movies in our waking up. You've already, you saw a wonderful movie last night. Um, and we'll have many more as we go along, but let's just look at the movie metaphor for a minute. Um, I was listening to a, an interview on the internet several days ago. It was the actor Matthew Mahomahi, and he was talking to a, the Texas Longhorns football team, and he was giving them a kind of a philosophical, fired up speech, but basically, he had the line that he told them, he said, I pretend for a living. I pretend for a living. This is an actor saying, I pretend for a living. That's what I do for a living. And then I couldn't help but think of that, and then I, I landed in the Dublin airport, and I'm coming through the hallways. Of, I love these airports over here in Ireland, because they have all the pictures, the photographs, of Irish people. Some of them, are actors, I mean, not just actors, but just a range of people. But what I'm saying, and what The Course in Miracles is saying, is that all those pictures are pictures of actors. Because all human beings are part of an act. And I did check, I did go to the dictionary one time to look up act, just to see what the dictionary says about act. And it said, to pretend. So, it's like uh, Matthew was saying to the football team, I pretend for a living. It doesn't matter what you seem to do for a living, whether you're a father, a mother, whether you have a family role, whether you have a professional role, whatever you seem to do for a living kind of implies that you do for survival of the body. You, you actually do things to receive wages or money or some compensation so that you can have money to spend on things like food, clothing, shelter, entertainment and so on and so forth. And you start to see that the whole system from A Course in Miracles perspective is a pretense. There's, there's a big self-deception going on with this and a big pretense. When we think of movies, we think of Watching something that has been filmed with actors, actresses, a script, you know, producers, directors, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on from a lot of people. But it's like, it's like a theater put on to film. It's like uh, recording plays, like in the old days Shakespeare, we used to have live plays, live theater, and now we just record live theater and it becomes a movie. And it's something you go to watch, maybe for wisdom, or entertainment, or distraction, or for a number of reasons. People go to theaters, pay money to watch movies. And I've watched a lot of movies, thousands and thousands of my life, and I was just thinking this morning of, of a movie from a filmmaker called Henry Jaglum, who I particularly enjoy. And he made this film a number of years ago called Venice, Venice in which he was kind of exploring the nature of movies. And he kind of went against the cardinal rule of movies and theater in that movie, because he was the filmmaker, and he had a scene where people were in a, a nice, beautiful room like this. They were, it was a lunch scene. All the, the characters were having lunch, and they were talking. And the, the discussion quickly got into quantum physics, and one of the French journalists was starting to ask questions and talking about Schrodinger's cat experiment, and they started talking quantum physics. And then he got very philosophical, and he said, what if all of this is a movie? He said to all of his lunchtime dinner guests. He says, what if all of this is a movie, and you're all just actors in a movie that I'm making, and the camera is right over there, and he pointed right into the camera. And in the middle of the movie, he did what the cardinal rule of the movies, because it's, you know, it's supposed to take you in as if you're there in the movie, and he pointed out, he pointed right into the camera, and he looked, and all the characters turned and looked, and everything got real still. That was the end of the scene. It was kind of a fun moment for me, because he was actually a filmmaker in, a, in the movie, and he was taking that moment to point out one very important thing. This is just a movie. All of them came out of character in that moment. 
He was playing himself in the movie. He was playing Henry Jaglum. So he was giving you a clue. He was going to go for something that has never been done before in movies. And then he has the audacity to stop in the middle of the scene as he's talking quantum physics, pondering the nature of things, to say, what if this is a movie and you're all just characters in my movie? And the camera's right over there and he points right at the camera and all the characters look up. And in that moment, as you're watching the movie, you are totally aware that you're watching a movie. Because he's made you aware of it. You aren't going to find that in most movies. That's the cardinal rule. No, they, they're acting. They want you to forget that you're watching a the movie. They want you to be so engaged, like you're right there with them. In the, in the plot. That's the purpose of movies. It's so much pretense that they, nobody ever stops in the middle of the movie. Um, there was another movie called Orlando that some of you might have seen. What's your name? Swinton? Tim Swinton. Tim Swinton. Who actually plays a man, a woman, a woman. She plays many male and female characters in kind of a reincarnational thing where it's covering many centuries. So you're getting a real broad view of this isn't like a little strip of life. This is like a real broad view because she's male, female, male, female. At one point, kind of like near the end of the movie, after she's gone through so many character transformations, she doesn't say it's a movie, but she just looks right into the camera with one of these looks like, what's going on here? You know, it's a really beautiful scene. She doesn't even say a word, she just looks right into the camera with one of those looks like, you know that there's more than this. You know that there's more than this. It's a, it's a knowing moment. And her eyes convey, and her face conveys so much in that moment, because when you're in the theater and you're watching it, then you just see that scene where she looks right into the camera after she's gone through so many character changes. It's a mystical kind of moment in the whole movie. I mean, it's the best moment. It gives you a glimpse that there's something beyond all of this. So, if this is a movie, let's just say, this is a movie, not the kind of movies that you go to see in the theater, but we'll say what's called daily life, and this is all a movie as well. Just like when you're dreaming at night, and you're, you're so caught up in the dream that you, until you wake up from the dream, oftentimes you're not aware that you were dreaming. You're so in the dream, it so much seems to be happening to you, you so much seem to be a character in the dream at night, in nighttime dreams, that you've completely forgotten that you're dreaming. We have a movie called Inception with Leonardo DiCaprio in, in which there's so many layers of dreaming that the characters are unaware of the dream at all. They're just acting and reacting like human beings do. So imagine that this is a dream and imagine that the only reason you take it so serious the only reason you ever get upset with this motion picture, what we call life on planet Earth, the only reason you ever get upset at all is because you've been duped. Your mind has been duped, your mind has been tricked into believing that you are a character in the dream and that you are surrounded by other characters. And just like in a movie set, when you, when you watch a movie, you know there's different, there's different camera angles in the movie. As you watch the movie, there's, it cuts from camera angle to camera angle, covering the movie. Well imagine that your five senses, through your eyes and your ears, that these are your little microphones, little funny shaped microphones, and this is your cameras, and that you've just got a camera angle here on planet Earth. You know, it shifts around and there's, there's seven billion camera angles in this film. Because it's, a lot, it's like the Truman Show. <laughs> there's a lot of angles and a lot of cameras. But these are like roving camera angles. They seem to move about. So it's quite a, an interesting experience on planet Earth with seven billion camera angles. And you start to, it's interesting to think of people as camera angles instead of people, instead of actual people. 
It's just your mind dreaming a dream, and there's seven billion camera angles in this dream, and none of those camera angles are showing you the same picture. But it's just like in a movie, you get to see many different angles. But movies aren't usually filmed from the character's perception. It's almost like there's a lot of different camera angles where the camera is wherever the camera is, but imagine that your body is like more just like a camera angle in this multifaceted movie. And the only reason you ever, ever, ever seem to get upset is because of the camera angle that you're looking through. If you were so far back, we'll say more to a universal camera angle, we'll call it a Holy Spirit camera angle, we'll call it above the battleground of the battlefield camera angle, you would see that there's nothing to get hung about, as the Beatles said. You would see all is peaceful from this universal camera angle. And it's only from these individual camera angles, which are just a very tiny portion, just one tiny camera angle of the whole thing, that's where the upset comes in. That's where you take it personal. That's where you have a personal offense. Like, hey, my camera angle is offended at what you said or what you did. The universe is like, no, maybe you should let go of that camera angle. Come back up here. Because it's just the camera angle that's causing the problem. It's all